Chris, it's that time again. Let's review some presentations and PowerPoints. Okay, for this very first one, I am going to review this uh, software is called Pretzi. I'm not sure if you used it before. They have a, a Pretzi award. This is from 2019. The one in 2020 did not come out yet. But um, Pretzi is a presentation software like PowerPoint, like Canva, where you can create presentations. But they give a 2019 Pretzi award. And I wanted to go over one of the presentations that I thought was uh, really fantastic. So let's dive into it. And as you can see, what I like about this website already is, uh, look at this, look at this banana cursor that they have, okay? So I'm gonna talk about the, the dawn of captivating presentations. I mean, we're talking about presentations and we're talking about presentations on top of that. So some things that I will be uh, reviewing on is the design element of it, the audience experience. When I say the audience experience, how easy is it for you to understand the message, right? The language that's used and more as I go through this. So if you have not used Prezi before, Prezi is a presentation software and they have a specific style of the slides. I'm just gonna flip through some of the slides if you are not aware of Prezi. So you see how it goes in and out just like that. That is a style that that Prezi has, it's really, really captivating. So as you can see, what I like about this uh, first slide already, so let me maximize this. What I like about this first slide already, it's it's hard. This is original artwork and, and story, as you can see down here. The artwork you can see is captivating already, right? The, the text, the dawn of captivating presentations. It seems like we're gonna go into uh, like a Netflix movie, a story. We're gonna start reading a book. So of course, most of us, business professionals. We don't have all the time in the world to create original work, nor are we gonna hire someone. But of course, if we had someone on the team, maybe that's possible. But again, they stepped up the game already by providing original artwork. Uh, what I like about this is that you can see really quickly, this is about captivating presentations, right? The dawn of captivating presentations. This just makes it more story-like. So as I flip through the next one, as I flip, as I flip through the next one, you can see it, the, the original artwork is continuous throughout the slide. As you can see on the top right, when an idea is born, a new hope is uh, arises. And then there's uh, text. So this, I'm going to say this is good and bad, that text that they have here. Now, this is good for us as readers because we can take the time to look at the artwork and read this paragraph. But if I was presenting this live to you right now, let's say, let's say I'm presenting this live to you right now, right? I can say, good morning, everyone. Today, we'll be talking about the dawn of captivating presentations. And what you have to know is that when an idea is born, new hope arises. Now, you see my the next thing that I'll be talking about? Either I talk or I read that short paragraph that they have. The downside is if I talk, right? You might be wondering, hmm, I wanna read that text that's on there. And if I read that text that's on there, I'm just reading that text that's on there. So when, when this is a presentation that is giving live, I would just say you can just pop on when an idea is born, a new hope arises, and then eliminate that paragraph text. You can pop it on later after you went through it. But if you have that all in the same time, I'm going to say people can't focus on, oh, should I listen to you? Should I, should I, should I read the text? Unless you're reading the text directly. You can, you can also have bullet points. But again, this is great for us right now when we're looking at the presentation afterwards. Uh, a really good transition. They just move down to the next person, right? This is even this is even better, right? Ideas are fragile, and then you have one sentence, right? Planting them carefully is the key to attracting the, the attention you deserve. Now, audience experience. As I'm judging presentations and powerpoints, you see that on our side as an audience member. Wow, this is so easy to understand, right? I, ideas are fragile. Planting them carefully is the key to attracting that. We, we get that. We don't have to 
we don't have to work so much to understand what the slide is about. And, and from slide one to slide two, I wanna point out something that's really, really critical. There's one idea to one slide, okay? You'll, prob you'll probably see that theme throughout. There's one idea to one slide. I'm just gonna go through a few more slides and go to the next presentation. Audience are craving exciting presentations. You see how they pop the main idea right up front so you know what to expect? And the numbers are easy to read, right? 100 million, they made that, they made that big, okay? Uh, so these are the numbers that matter. They, they made it more popping out, right? 100 million presentations are created every single day. And these are easy, easy to comprehend. Now, they probably did some work. They probably had maybe a, a, a paragraph or two, but they probably condensed it down to the sentence. And this is the art of presentation, condensing it down so that it's easy for your audience to understand. Here's the main idea. Here's the, here's the main support. And as you can see, the original artwork is, is still here. The theme, the theme is still there. And this is very easy to understand, right? 90% of them are boring. In total business, we lose up to 250 million. That's why we want to, we need captivating presentations because of X, Y, and Z. Oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. So I'm gonna, it's just, it should go up like this, right? Uh, what I like about this is now they're introducing right the world of press pre presonate. Uh, I, the th this keeps on going with the theme. As you can see, they're, they're telling more of a story. And this goes into the theme of right, this tale was born for the one. We know we're getting into a story now. They're introducing a story along with their PowerPoint. So overall, uh, this is why they probably gave them an award. A Prezi Award for 2019. Uh, as you can see, right? Follow along. I love this banana. Follow along in this compelling story, total of original characters and artwork. So really good. Uh, one idea per slide. The, the artwork is really captivating. It's really easy for the audience to experience this because it's not so much. Okay. So if you're interested in that, you can just go to prezi.com slash awards. So I hope that you like that one. The next one, the next one, I'm actually going to switch it up on, on uh, a presentation that we're going to do. We're going to be talking about the worst slides that people have made. Okay, the words presentation slides uh, ever. I hope that you can learn a lot from this. If you are the one doing presentation slides like this, well, let's let's fix them now. Okay, so let's dive back into it. And this is from the website Emails. Okay, six worst presentation slides ever. Man, as you can as you scroll through this, oh my god, look at this already. So I'm gonna put on this PowerPoint. I'm also going to be judging this PowerPoint on top of the worst presentation slides. I'm going to react to that too. Um, I'm not sure what this is. The picture, you can see it's pixelated. Of course, I'm not going to get too much into that. They can up okay, information overkill. Okay, I'm just going to, let me, let me react to this presentation itself. One idea, okay? And it's very easy to understand. One idea, one picture. You, you can see, you don't even need a speaker to explain this. You can just read the text and you can just understand it. How easy was it for me and for you to understand it, right? Maybe less than a second. Information overkill, and you see this picture, information overkill. Now, the thing about this slide is, uh, what I like about this slide, actually, there are things I like about this slide. How rivers are formed. I like the title to the slide because it, it, it prompts us to understand the slide already. This Reading this title tells us what the slide is going to be about. You know how sometimes we put in slides and it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't prompt us or engage us. It just says, um, maybe it's so dense, we don't even know what it means. Or sometimes, yes, we can use words like agenda, all of that stuff. But when we put it in a form of a question, your audience is going to be more engaged. The thing about this slide is, the, 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 the image on the background, how can you even see the text? How can you even see the text when you can't, you know, it's, it's blended into the background. It's so hard to read. And of course, the amount of information of this is exactly what they're saying. Information overkill. Let's go to the next one. Cheesy images, okay? Low quality and un uninteresting. 
Uh, I do agree with this to a certain degree. You can use uh, stock images that just don't overdo them. Slide after slide after slide, people will say, hey, that's not original. What you can also do is sometimes if you're talking about a topic, you can also snap a picture of yourself or maybe use a, a picture of your team. That will be more relevant to your team because they can see themselves in it or they can see something that they know. You know, you can snap a picture of even your water bottle uh, to, to prove a point, right? So use stock images. Uh, it's, it's good to use stock images when it's not too much, okay? And yes, don't have low quality images. Um, let's go to the next one. Haphazard color scheme. The thing about this presentation as well, it's like one color, uh, one phase, right? One color, one phase. I love the theme of this. It's really easy to understand as well. Haphazard color schemes. Definitely, you can't, you can't even read the title. Uh, it's hard to read these words. It's, 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 it's green and uh, the colors are yucky. Okay, I'm just going to say the colors are like, ooh, it makes you feel like you don't want to look at it, right? Have you seen the slide where you don't want to look at it? It feels like it's this one. So make sure that your colors, they have a theme to it. Boring to death font. Now, I, I slightly agree with this. Uh, you you want to use a font that is not too, too uh, messy at the same time, like the ones that are like uh, out there. Yeah, rather stick to a font where everyone can read than using a fancy font. Now, uh, yes, you can spice up your font just a little bit, but I'm going to say there's nothing too wrong with fonts like this. It, it goes back to like the storytelling that you use. What I have to say about this, uh, if you do present a slide, I would rather you pop one of these up one at a time. Maybe this they do do that. Of course, this is just me flipping through. If you do have a slide that have, how many points do they have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go one at a time, okay? That'll be easier. If you can, it's another trick that you can use. One text, one picture here, and then you go to the next slide, okay? One text, another picture. You can go through eight of them. So instead of having one slide and you spend five minutes on that slide, you can spend maybe 30 seconds and then flipping through each slide, you will engage people a lot more with that. And then the unnecessary fancy fonts, like what I was, unnecessarily fancy fonts, what I was saying before, yeah. Um, don't have fancy fonts like this. People just wanna be able to read it. Uh, so yeah, don't do fancy fonts that are too crazy. And this is the last one, sloppy organization. This is not too sloppy. I think maybe it irks some people when it's up and down like this, but I'm gonna say this is not too bad, yeah. So be careful, maybe you can put all your text up here, but I'm gonna say this is not so bad. Um, just make sure that you can put bullet points to this too. Of course, people need to read this later on, so that's why they probably have a paragraph there. So uh, um, a, a cheat that you can do when you're giving the presentation, so when you're creating the presentation, you can have it full like this, like a paragraph, but when you are delivering the presentation, you can pull it in bullet points. And then afterwards, when you send the present presentation back to everyone, you can include this again. Now, you've already created it, so it'll be easy, okay? So create the text first and then put it in bullet points. The reason I'm saying this is if, um, if I am delivering this presentation, you can't, choose to listen to me and then try to read it at the same time, what are you doing, right? So make it easy for your audience to, to understand. Okay, that was the sixth worst presentation uh, ever. And I'm gonna say, man, some of those presentations uh, are bad, are bad. So I hope you're liking this so far. So every uh, once in a while, I will go on live stream to critique presentations and PowerPoints. If you want your presentation critiqued in the future, uh, you can drop them in the comments below. I will try to get to it. Or you can email me at kit at bostonspeaks.com. And again, if you did not get a chance to subscribe to this channel yet, to this channel yet here on Boston Speaks, I'm here to help you become a more engaging, captivating, and persuasive speaker. So let's talk about the last presentation, and this is going to be a good one. It's not gonna be a bad one. This is also an award. Uh, it's not an award, but this is from Beautiful AI. This is the presentation software that I use. The best and worst of presentations in 2019. Let's pick one of them. Uh, I'm gonna pick number one, okay? Let's see why this is good. 
Unmistakable Create Creative. I believe this is the name of the organization. Inspiration, Education, Entertainment. Uh, what I like about this is it's simple. What I don't like about this is I don't know what I'm getting myself into. Maybe this is a pitch deck. I don't know what I'm getting myself into yet. The unmistakable creative. This is uh, short and to the point, right? Inspires people to lead more meaningful lives, educate them with practical insights, entertain them with the process. Maybe they can put an image there. Again, not necessary, but I like how simple it is, right? Like one, two, and three. Uh, this is also good because it pops up big, right? You can just, you can see that they have big text and then there's a small icon. Uh, this seems like now it's more like a pitch deck, right? This is why they're so good because they have X, Y, and Z. Okay, what I like about this slide is that you can see, again, you remember how I said earlier? Yes, this says revenue. You can also put this in a form of a question, but again, revenue is great. We know what to expect, but to spice things, up a question or you can use the word and add that in there somehow so this is great because as you can see the numbers we just want to look at the numbers boom right uh, if you are creating a presentation you want to highlight the most important thing in the graph which are the numbers here you can do something like this uh, based uh, I'm going to talk about this sentence based on full ad inventory of two ads per episode at 750 per ad in Q4 2019 1000 per ad in Q1 in 2020 now when I say that out loud you probably don't want to hear me say it you probably maybe again it's not that technical but it doesn't it doesn't it's not conversational so to make this a little bit better how can you switch up the language here to make it more conversational even when I'm reading this now it takes it takes a little a tiny bit more work to understand this so how can you make that more conversational I'm gonna do one more slide what makes unmistakable creative different what I like about this slide again all the the good slides that we talked about one idea one slide this is great because you just pop on a question and now you want to engage the audience right you get them even if they don't say anything you get them to think a little bit so this is just they, they focus in uh, I want to talk about the variety here right they they use okay these four images and icons then they go went to two graphs and then they pop on a question the variety of this will keep your audience engaged so um, it, it's, a, it's a simple simple slide deck but it's going to become very effective depending on how good the presenter can tell stories and give emotions and talk about all of that um, that's it for today I hope that you've learned from some of the good presentations and also some of the worst presentation slides ever. And again, my name is Kit Pang. If you had not had a chance to subscribe to this channel, I'm here to help you become a more captivating, engaging, and persuasive speaker. And if you're still watching this right now, I know that improving your presentation and your public speaking skills are important to you. So check out the other videos on this 